Worst movie ever made, an experimental movie podcast designed with one thing in mind. To find, and I think we might have succeeded, the worst movie ever made. I'm your host, Chris Ackman, joined by my co-hosts and fellow mad scientists, Rob Scucci and Bob Hassick. Hey guys, how are you? And why are we doing this? I, I'm having mixed feelings. Um, like, really yeah. terrible and even worse? Like, the whole time I was watching it, I would be like, this fucking piece of shit! And then I'd be like, oh, that makes yeah, that's funny. Like, you know, like that. <laughs> really? You had some of those? <laughs> well, like, it had like campiness to it. So mm. it was like, okay, I see what they're trying to do. And it's like, I wasn't mad as I thought I would be, but it, it was upsetting nonetheless. Bob, get away in. Yeah. I have, uh, I have uh, spent my entire last two days going on tomorrow also supervising teenagers as they use the bathrooms during testing uh, state testing sessions so oh, i'm great. literally following them to bathrooms then hearing them relieve themselves and then flush and then maybe <laughs> wash their hands for <laughs> about four hours straight for three days so uh I, i'm not sure if i'd rather do that again or watch this movie let's just say <laughs> well you get paid to do that True. exactly yeah <laughs> and you could you could imagine whatever movie you want in your head so uh, well, don't forget that we, we we do take a cut from those sponsors that we have on the show. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to swing it over to bad reviews just so we can get going on this piece of shit cool. that I hate. Let's do it. Okay, uh, here we go. Uh, so this week's a little different. I looked up uh, critic reviews, and honestly, I use IMDb because it gives you the Metacritic uh, list. Yeah, uh, don't know why I don't go straight to Metacritic. I think it's because I'm already on IMDb. Yeah. Um, but this week I had to, there, there weren't many, let's just put it that way. Um, there weren't people that I've used, um, before and you would have to go to like the wall street journal or the New York times and subscribe or what, you know what I mean? So, um, <clears throat> instead I kind of did a, a, a YouTube comment thing myself. I'm going to, I'm going to obviously throw it to your YouTube comments, but I, mm-hmm. I just Googled critic, uh, critical reviews of, um, Double Dragon. Okay. <clears throat> and instead of getting those, I just got reviews from people. And I'm just going to read two uh, as quickly as I can because I thought they were hilarious. Um, so this tells you nothing about the movie, really, because they're just people. But uh, mm-hmm. this guy, um, I won't use his name because he's not a critic. He says, glad to saw this movie. Double Dragon is one of my favorite game of all time. When I was child, I played this game on the video game where I insert one R's coin in this game and challenge the others. I learned many hits and combo hits. Nowadays, I'm playing it on my mobile. And then another girl, uh, somebody else says, love the game. This movie is pretty innocent and weird and silly and bad with a wonderful cast. I loved this movie when I was a teen. Today, humanity really is horrible just like in this movie, I watched these movies to go back to a better place in time to escape the garbage of today's society. Winky face. Um, can I interject and say they they said they liked the movie because it reminds them of a better time, not like the shit time it is now. But the movie also took place in a really shitty time. Yes, I, okay. I felt the same way. It was it was uh, nonsensical. OK, <laughs> you got any YouTube comments? Yeah, I got a couple. Um, first one, a movie that was released in the 90s based on the 2000s, but looks like the 80s. Fair assessment. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking for button combos for a twisty kick and gnarly knee for DD2. But instead, <laughs> I found a golden necklace that is broken in half. So it's freaking useless. Like this film. Ha ha. What a cheese move. Basically, when they discover the Terra. Kata Warriors in 74, everyone wanted to make movies about the Shadow Warriors from 3,000 years ago. Someone should remake it, though. And then, damn, two th- 2007 was hardcore, lol. <laughs> That's what I got. 
1994 was a huge year for movies. I'm not surprised there weren't. Right. I'm not surprised the critics were not uh, busy with this movie and busy with actual movies. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. That I, I feel like it was between 91 and 97 was the the movie industry's uh, like second or third golden era. There, like there it were was so like, many bangers in the 90s. It was the beginning of really shitty CGI segueing into like the golden era of like the mix of practical effects and CGI. And mm -hmm. then then it went straight to all CGI yeah, after the 90s and everything started to look mm -hmm. like shit. Yeah. Uh, you guys want to go to test number one? The worst of its kind? Yeah, let's do it. Yep. Is this film the best of the worst or the worst of its kind? Sorry, I just realized I, I keep looking at our like Discord call and I realized that my son cut my nose open. So I'm trying to assess oh. how how bloody this situation is, <laughs> but it looks hard. like I'm okay. Gotta clip his nails. Um they first is spawn with Michael J. White. How about that? Nice. Oh. As you guys might remember, it's a seventeen percent. That is a okay. low start. Yeah. However, we see the crow again. Uh this has come up before. 85, Brandon Lee. Uh, yeah. That apparently was good. Rob, you said the first one was, what, the only good one? The first one's good, but like the, the, every other remake, they're all remakes, not like sequels. So they're all like the same story, slightly different. And I think oh. D, I think DMX is the, uh, the main character in one of them. No shit. Yeah. But the first one's really good. It's like, it's like noir action hero, anti-hero stuff. So it's, it's fun. It's, it's, fu yeah. it's, like, it's corny, funny. And there's a really good gunfight and stuff like that. Nice. Okay. Well, it got an 85, so it must not be terrible. Uh, Dolph Lundgren, score, uh, he is the star of Universal Stor uh, Soldier with someone else, but uh, I'll leave him nameless for the moment. Okay. 35% uh, there. That's a bad movie. That is a con uh, candidate for the podcast. Okay. For sure. Um, and the other, his co-star, Ro um, Rob Van Damme. <laughs> My uh, friend Jay's going to have a laugh at that. Uh, Jean-Claude yeah. Van Damme in Hard Target, 58%. Okay. We know a little bit about that movie as well. Mm -hmm. And then Liam Neeson in Dark Man, which is another one that we've talked about. Yep. Uh, did you know that that got an 83? I, I assume that I must have mentioned. No, because I don't think Dark Man's been uh, one of the five on the test. I think I just mentioned it one pod not too long yeah, ago. Yeah, I didn't know it got that high. 83. I was surprised. I, I, Bob and I agreed that it's a good movie, um, but I didn't realize that it would be uh, that highly scored. So I was pretty happy yeah. to do that. That gives us an average of 55.6, which is um, an average average. And yeah. Double Dragon, if you guys want to guess. 25. I want to say like it, it's not as bad as we think it is because people love it. So like 25. I, I'd, I'd echo 25. I think about the same. 12. Oh, okay. So half. half that. Poultry 12. Uh, making the difference a negative 43.6. And it okay. was the worst of its kind beating on spawn at a 17, which is a tough, tough right. tax. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've jotted down that score. And we're going to move it on to test number two, the plot pitch. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to approach Bob and Rob uh, as if they can make this movie for me. Um, and I'm going to ask them for a certain amount of money, and then they're going to give me a star grade on my plot pitch uh, so that I know how to improve moving forward. So let mm -hmm. me sum up the movie for you guys in test number two, the plot pitch. Hey, God, hey, not, man. Hey, what? You want to hear my movie idea? No. Three, two, one, go. Guys, give me $8 million. I'm going to burn it. Okay. <laughs> There's um, the I mean, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> like none of us. Will see uh, yeah, I think you're on your own, though. I'm not. I'm not gonna do. I'm gonna split. <laughs> okay. No. From Bob. Yes, from I, Rob. I'm, I'm uh, gonna split as well. I'm just saying, though. Like none of us have ever seen that much money in our life, so to see it like engulfed in flames would be like a fucking cool. Oh, oh but, you would watch that, but not not the not the movie itself. Uh, having not no. told you a thing about it. If the movie was setting, if it was just like, I can go into a room with that much money and it was lit on fire. I'd want to see it. I mean, that'd be okay. pretty cool. I, I, I'm, I'm actually not going to burn metaphorically. No, though. 
I'm, I'm only going to burn about six million of it. I'm going to give a million to Robert Patrick, and then I'm going to spread the other million over um, a new Los Angeles uh, post-apocalyptic set, and uh, that that's. And then uh, Alyssa Milano is going to get a, a, a small check as well. Would you guys make can that? Just, no, if we can give Melissa Milano a, a, a small check and then like, you know, hang out. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you who gave Alyssa Milano, uh, Milano a small check a couple of times in this movie. And it was both of these fucking Lee brothers. Uh, but we'll get into that. Uh, <laughs> no, I wouldn't make it though. Absolutely not. But I, I do. Um, okay. And that, that was like a two star. Two star. Yeah. Same. Okay. That's fair. I think that's totally fair. Let me jot that down. All right. Um, no and no. Yeah. And a two star. Okay, cool. Uh, I, I like where this is going. Let's move it on to our first chunky test of the night. And that is mm-hmm. uh, test number three, the worst dialogue. The worst movie ever made presents the worst dialogue ever made. All right. um, As bad as Cat in the Hat was, this might have been worse. Uh, We will determine that after we go through our 10. Um, Rob, as you noticed, I sent one extra clip this week. Um, Mm -hmm. So normally three and one, seven, three and one are clips here. Uh, but we're going to do seven, yeah. three, two, and one because the dialogue is just that bad. Um, Fair enough. But we've got some quickies. Uh, starting with number 10. Hey, Broomhead, okay. says one Lee brother. Another Lee brother to the Mohawk that they're talking to. We're going to sweep the floor with your skull. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty bad, right? Like, that's a, a little taste. Yeah. A little taste, like just, a, just one mm-hmm. teaspoon. Uh, Jimmy says, great. A grilled cheese engine. Way to go, Billy. Now we're pedestrians. <laughs> Re- referring, yeah. to, of course, to their garbage eating mobile uh, when he threw in a do not combust can of cheese whiz or whatever and it ruined the engine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, number eight. <laughs> Listen, Dragonfly, says Jimmy to Billy. I'll tell you when to tag in. Billy says, don't call me Dragonfly. Then their opponent in the fucking tag team martial arts uh, event happening in the beginning says, you can call him dragon dropping as he elbows him in the back of the head. Yeah. That now, was that, was that dr- like dragon poop or like dragon like falling out of the sky as I elbow him? I didn't know which. Oh, definitely poop. Yeah. They should have said okay. droppings, though. Yeah. But he's only one thing. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, he's one big yeah. piece of shit. I guess it is it, <laughs> like if the um, Triceratops in Jurassic Park did one solid log, they would call it like Triceratops dropping. Okay. It, it's Bob's point. I, that's exactly what Bob's trying to say. <laughs> okay. That's the level of writing they're at. Okay. I'm, I'm just echoing the writing quality of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's throw it to our uh, first clip. This one's called Watch. Sweet. guys on a watch? Yeah, on a watch. It's time to skin you guys. Compliments of Kogashuko. <laughs> Horn, right? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's one mohawk saying to the, like, second-hand man to a bobo. Um, yeah. Like, he's like, yeah, I own a watch. And then he shows, like, his, um, his, the guy and his gang, his watches, and the guy in the gang somehow knows how to finish the how to finish the line, which they yeah. do a lot in this movie. I thought it was extremely um, cheesy how they finish mm-hmm. each other's sentences. Like it's it's not how I don't know. I guess it's supposed to look more uh, clever or something. Yeah, synergy. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number six is Alyssa Milano's character, Marion. She says, um. I, I'll give this a little context and it'll make more sense. Um, it's <clears throat> Billy upset that Jimmy has been captured by whatever the fuck his name is. For some reason, I can't remember it. It's like Shogun Kugo or Korgun Shogun. 
joking. Shit. I have no yeah. fucking idea. Anyway, the guy from silver, the guy from silver chair, basically looks exactly like him. Yes, <laughs> that guy. Um, <laughs> he he's upset that his brother um, has been captured by the bad guy, and she says in a sort of romantic scene right after uh, his brother might possibly be dead. You're not uh, by yourself. You have me. And then they're about to make out. And I, I, the Mohawks start storming into the factory. And she goes, yeah. it's an attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I mean, yeah. they, they, the dialogue is exposition to the point where they, she had to declare that it was an attack in case you thought it was the power core or something. Yeah, there's no confusion whatsoever. So, <laughs> I mean, good on them for yeah. trying to just like include everybody, I guess. Yeah, I guess. It's really hard. It's so hard not to bring up all the other flaws I'm finding. When I, you keep reminding me of these scenes, I'm like, oh, yeah, then that happened. Oh, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I'll, it, it, I'll, I'll, I'll bite my lip because I've, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> well we do we have five more and then uh worst acting but then we're going to uh skip yeah. to test number five the worst production uh because we threw that in a yep. little earlier this this week uh so moving on to number five this is a random mailman hanging out with a mohawk um okay he's on top of a oil silo and uh he's yeah. planning on jumping down uh, i guess onto jimmy and billy and he goes <clears throat> hey punks Special delivery. And then he jumps off and he goes, airmail. And then he yeah. lands on his stomach in the mud. And <laughs> Jimmy goes, I've never seen a postman move that fast. And they both go, <laughs> and like high five. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure where the dig on the mail service came from. Like, I, I, like I, <laughs> I was around in 94. That wasn't a big, a big thing. But I also... No. No, in the nineties, wouldn't they shoot fucking everybody instead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was, yeah. there was, there was a term going postal. If you've ever heard that term before, yeah, yeah, um, yeah still in use. But I think. the uh, uh, the part that made me laugh really hard was when the postman came back in the in the attack scene near the end. Yeah, there, there. Are, I think yeah. there are two instances where you see a, a man with a, a carrier bag in a post when office. He, when he came back yeah. with it's his the same bag guy. still in tow. <laughs> It's the same guy. It's like what? What turned him? Like what made him? Like, Look, he, ha- having having been an employee of the post office for uh, a, a few months, um, I, I don't know if the listeners know that, but I'm no longer with the post office. They um, they do talk openly in your orientation about how um, employees are often disgruntled, <laughs> uh, and. They don't um, lend credence to the term postal, but they I, I think just talking about it um, and and t- getting you um, to be aware of your surroundings at work because it's possible that someone might fly off the handle. Um, yeah, it's you know, it, it, it shows that it is an infuriating job at times. Um, yeah. But they also drill into you how important it is to get the mail out. So I understand why that guy still got his messenger bag on him. Yeah, you know, because he's probably only mail. he's probably only uh, part timing. Because uh, yeah. Lord knows, I was there a few months, and they were giving me like ten hours a week. Um, yes. You know, so it would have taken me a few years to get a regular route and regular hours. Uh, if you don't know yeah. about that, uh, the post office, um, be prepared to not get any hours when you've been hired. That's mm-hmm. how. It is. Um, all right, I guess that's on. the only bit of con- continuity they have is he was actually. Uh, Apparently on the job during the non the non curfew hours, so yeah, was, <laughs> he, he was, was taking the ten only minutes. continuity that had <laughs> <laughs> at nighttime when the gangs run the roads. Though he uh, takes the satchel off, I think. Yeah, <laughs> he misses. <laughs> uh, number four is uh, I wrote Shuko. I think uh, so. That must be his name. Um, <clears throat> he's talking to his two henchmen. <laughs> Um, I don't okay. want to get into poor taste, uh, most offensive when um, by describing them any further. And he says, um, Huey, Lewis, any news? <laughs> yeah. Because um, that's a thing that's real that exists. Yes. Huey, Lewis and the news. Uh, well yeah. done. It, had they um, it would have I, I feel like it would have hit a lot harder had he said uh, Lewis, you know, go left. Here we go right, and then people would have been like Lewis and Huey, Huey Lewis, and then an hour later he's like Huey Lewis, and he knew that would have 
you know, if you had a setup. Yeah, a little subtlety. Maybe. A, slight, a small amount. A it's still really dumb. <laughs> yeah, this movie had no subtlety. <laughs> no, it did not. Uh, yeah, refer to my Alyssa uh, Milano comment from earlier. Yeah. Uh, number three, this is, uh, as I said, three, two, and one are clips, so we're going to go to kick butt. I'm sorry I had to kick your butt so bad. Hey, dream on. You kick Koga Pugo's butt. <sighs> mm-hmm. I, I still don't know his last name, but I recognize that Jimmy threw puke in the middle of it. Yeah. Well done. I missed that <laughs> my <laughs> first viewing. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Um, moving on to number two, uh, the plan. So what's the plan? Okay. The plan is that I have loaded a Bobo's gang net link with false information. So it seems like the maniacs are getting an unfair share of the profit. And once I download this into Shuko's mainframe, it should start a gang mutiny. That is the plan. See? What does she have? Plan? It's not a plan. That is too. It's a great plan. She's uploading the downlink. Plan. Uploading the downlink. <laughs> the, uh, AOL, I mean, the AOL humor. I, I yeah, I had to um I had to use every ounce of my willpower to not make that number one because you know me. Yeah. Um but honestly, none of that made sense. I I I I, I, I was watching again to make sure that the clips uh were probably mm-hmm. a little timed because I always double check just so I don't send you Mm-hmm. The wrong times, and a Bobo does drop some kind of digital device in the yeah. beginning that um, Marion goes over and picks up. But yeah. I totally missed it the first time, probably because as she's bending over, you're getting a close up shot on her ass cheeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, I'm I'm a dude, so I yeah. maybe I wasn't paying attention to why she was bending. Over. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just gross. But uh, no, no, you were right to do that. Do that. <laughs> the uh, the whole like I am going to show that the maniacs are getting more of the profit hadn't been explained. So you can you can deduce from that that all of the gangs are taking equal cuts um, yeah. of whatever they're doing. They're they're rousing money out of people by intimidating mm-hmm. them into like protection tax or something. So we don't fuck your store up or something. Yeah. But they don't explain any of this. So I don't know where the money is coming from. Um, I don't know. Does every gang have a little digital device that where they can see if they're getting an equal cut of the pie? None of it made any fucking sense to me. Hated yeah. it. Hated and it. They, hated it. They could have gone with. They could have said a, way, a lot less, and it would have spoken a lot more. If they, she's waving a little device. Oh, we're gonna blackmail them. Ding. Next scene. Done. Yeah, we're just gonna download <laughs> a virus into uh, Shuko's mainframe, so he thinks yeah. the maniacs are gonna move against them or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not like they ever followed through with anything. So why no. explain that much? That is, well, Bob, thank you for saying that because that was another thing that I wanted to mention on this um, second clip, or or second to last clip of uh, worst dialogue is that they actually never download the uplink, and it doesn't yeah. like this whole thing never happens because the two brothers decide that they're going to steal the medallion right then and there instead of uh, doing yeah. that gang mutiny. So that actually never comes to fruition anyway. Yeah. Uh, just to cheapen it even more. So, Rob, why don't we get a drum roll? Clip number one is Lee Brothers. We know these guys. It's the Lee Brothers. Hugging home. (laughs) Take a ride on Wilson. Oh, I get it. Ugly. <laughs> Brilliant. That is. Oh, God. Bob, go ahead. <laughs> no. That's... I knew that was coming. I was so excited. <laughs> uh, it, you, it, did you assume I was going to put it number one? Because I, I thought that was some of the. I, I need to find. Uh, I need to, like a thesaurus, I need to find different words for corny and cheesy. Um, lame. It was like the well, lame yeah. dialogue. I, I have to say that was one of my dad's most repeated jokes uh, when I was growing up. 
it was it wasn't from this movie, obviously. But he he would always say, "Oh, that's one of the Lee sisters, uh, Ugg and Home, or something like that." Like, <laughs> oh, really? Just, yeah. I had never yeah. heard that before. Uh, I I definitely thought that someone in the writing room had, you know, cooked that up and was like, "Oh, this is great, and we're gonna feature this like 13 minutes in." Mm -hmm. We're gonna let them know the kind of writing competence that we have, and it, and it and it did. It's yeah, it was like twelve minutes and forty five seconds into the fucking movie, and I was like, oh yeah. my god, I I, I don't want to watch this anymore. <laughs> yeah, and they and they called it back later too, more than once. More than once, yeah, yeah. There is a um, there's a scene that we're gonna talk about. Um, it's a gonna come up in the tr catch all, but um. I, I will uh, probably mention this again. Uh, but for now, we're going to move on to test number four, the worst acting. Test number four, the worst acting. Naturally, we'd use the Catwoman thing for this one. Uh, this is all clips. We got four of them. Let's start with. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I said, wait a second. The Satori's gone, and there's nothing we can do to bring her back. But she should have told us about the dragon a long time ago. She dumped the whole thing on us as usual. How was she supposed to know this was going to happen? She did the best she could, Jimmy. I can't believe you. She was the only family we had. It's not like people were lining up to take care of us after Dad died. Yeah. Well, what the hell do you think I've been doing, huh? Look, we need to work on a plan. No. No more plans. You're always planning, Jimmy, and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. We can't afford to flop the handle. This isn't some stupid tournament, Billy. We have to think about this. The only thing that matters now is that you and me work together. Because we ain't got nobody else. That's how Satori wanted. Get it together, you look like hell. Look who's talking, ugly. Get it straight. You're ugly. I'm homely. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have two things to say, and uh, then I'll <laughs> shut up. Shoot. Um, first, first thing is, it's, it's always a Fender Stratocaster on, like, the bridge pickup with a little bit of chorus effect on it. Like, like that, in the like background. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then also, like, Whenever these guys get heated in this movie, they 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 suddenly they're suddenly from Brooklyn. <laughs> no, that I was thinking the exact same thing. I'm like, when did they, were they from New York? They're in New Angeles or something like yeah. that. So, because no more planning, cool. no more like, planning. Yeah, it's like halfway to gangsters, so it's cool, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'll just talk yeah. about it now because this is the scene that I was just talking about. Uh, they're they're overlooking the ocean too because in movies mm -hmm. it's, it's super tropey to put these kind of uh, soft and like uh, reconciliation or, uh, argument, then reconciliation scenes mm -hmm. over water for some reason. I, I don't know what that is. Yeah. It's like the, the overlooking the, the ocean makes you see more clearly or something because yeah. you can, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely a trope that they, they really bought into here. Mm -hmm. Great. Number two of the worst acting is called I See You. This is a quick one. I can see you. No, you can't. Come here. Come here. Grab my shoulder. You could score. It's like they wanted Seth Green for that guy, but he was too yes. young still. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that would be a perfect type of casting. Uh, the that delivery. reminded me of that reminded me totally of like the Toxic Avenger or any of the Toxic Avenger mm -hmm. sequels. Yeah. Okay, I haven't seen it. Uh, I I hate to say, but the line delivery of "I can see you" was supposed mm -hmm. to be like a little sarcastic, like edgy. Um, mm -hmm. So I give him a pass actually there, but then when Jimmy is like. No, you can't! Like, all play he him. Him. Yeah. Pokes him in the fucking eye with, like, a metal stick. Oh, yeah. The guy, the Seth Green wannabe turns around, and he's like, oh, you know, you, you heard it just now. It's way over the top, but he yeah. doesn't have any visible damage to his eye, even. Yeah, that would have uh, failed which, him. That would have gotten his brain, the way they right. shot that thing through. 
Yeah, so uh, I really loved that clip. We needed to have it somewhere, and and he was over the top for the amount of damage he sustained in actuality. So let's move on to our next clip. This one's a little bit longer. It's called Is It? Okay. Okay, how hard can it be to pull my blood dragon? Huh? I mean, it's down there. The river's really deep. Damn it! I just want total domination of one major American city. Is that too much to ask for? Is it? Is it? Huh? It's a bad career move, boys. A very bad career move. It's time for plan B. He who cannot adapt shall perish. Now get out of here. You disgust me. Now, leave. Except for you. Lash. You stay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think Robert Patrick went full Dennis Hopper and Super Mario Brothers mm-hmm. there. Uh, where you can tell that he knows this movie is a fucking joke. Yeah. Uh, not that I, not that I like Dennis Hopper anyway. Um, but Robert Patrick was actually really good as the team 1000. He was yeah. like old calculating. And then the hardest part I thought of that role in Terminator two judgment day is that he has to be a, a super computer, um, who flirts the line of, uh, totally sentient machine that needs mm-hmm. to look and feel and act just like a person to convince people. Yeah. Um, and that's gotta be really fucking hard to do because he needs to yeah. have something robotic. He has to have something mechanical about him, but you need to believe that everyone he talks to in Terminator two, as he's putting on a facade buys it, but you, the viewer can tell that he's the robot. That's yes, that's a really really subtle line, and that's great acting. So I don't feel mm-hmm. like Robert Patrick's bad, but he's not good in this. Like, I mean, he's not yeah. good at all in this. You could tell he was having fun, though. I, I kind of appreciate that. Like, he, like, you know, when you just like, get the like, Nicholas Cage approach was like, ah, oh, this is probably going to be a pile of shit, but you know, I'm gonna go gonna a little over. I'm gonna yeah. go a little over just because like, I, you know, I, I got to spend twelve hours a day here. Might as well like dick around a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I, he, uh, uh, he ahead, mentioned in an interview, and, I, and I'll try not to spoil anything else. But he mentioned in an interview how he was trying to play the line between villain, but also obviously somewhat humorous. And and he yeah. said he was he was trying he was having fun with it. Okay, because that that's actually perfect. Because I was going to mention that the line, and I don't know if he worked this in himself or it was actually in the script, and they were tr- just trying to make it funny, but like. He when he says all I'm trying to do is dominate one major American yeah. city, is that too much to ask for? It sounds like it's comedy writing. Yeah, but with this movie, I couldn't fucking tell because it's just not it's not funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but everybody's after world domination, so the fact that yeah. he just he's like just begging for one city, yeah. is kind of funny, <laughs> I guess. Funny. Yeah, but I didn't know whether or not to, to laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got one left, and it's at the very it's at the tail end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, let's send it to a Bobo on I Could Drive. This is right before the credits roll, just so people know. Thanks, Marion. But I didn't ask for help. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Hey, where's Billy? What's up, chicken butt? <laughs> uh, goes it, Bobo. I was just wondering if I could uh, hang out with you guys for a change. Sure, Bobo. I think that's a great idea. Would you be nice? I'm tired of fighting. I really am. Oh, Bobo, it's Billy. I just want to take it easy for a while. Oh, sweet. You... you think maybe I could drive? Hmm? Oh, hmm? no. Hmm? I've seen the way you drive. <laughs> no problem. Yes! <laughs> Hop on in. 
I'm sure glad we ditched Billy. Now Marion and I can finally be alone. What? Hey, hey, hey. I got some Jim Henson in there too. You sound yeah. like a figure. No, definitely. <laughs> Uh, here's a bit of information speaking of worst acting they actually hired two different actors for that role one for the before the transformation and one for after oh wow okay. Okay. They, were not, they were not the same guy I thought right. they were until I did my research and I'm like oh Jesus they actually hired a second guy for that <laughs> role okay I meant to look up the first actor because I know I've seen him in something he plays uh, like a a total tool like jockhead, you know, muscle man in something else too. But I, yeah. I don't know what, and it shows you the difference between like what today, like when, why well, I guess he needs to look a little bit um, more like reserved muscly um, mm-hmm. as original Abobo. And then when he becomes like with just one giant muscle, uh, you need to be able yeah. to see the difference. But when they said he can uh, bench press 800 pounds and he got out of the truck, I was like, no, he can't. Like, no. he, like no. he's probably six four, uh, but he has about as much muscle mass as I do, and I I couldn't bench two fifty. You know what I mean? So like, there's just no chance. That that's when they had something in the script, and then like they then they cast it, and they didn't change the dialogue to reflect the change in casting. Um, have you you guys have seen me myself and Irene? Right? Of course. Jim Carrey is talking to Renee Zellweger about like, oh, so then you got a boob job, and then this happened, and then <laughs> yeah, I'm not hanging shit on Renee Zellweger. She's not. Endowed heavily. No, in the, no, she was not. And heavily. she responds to and these these are all mine. And it's like you had someone buxom in mind for that that role. And then you got her. No problem. That's that's fine. But like you should have changed that part of the script because right, like, she doesn't have big boobies. Yeah, you know. Although you know, Sorry. Renee was was pretty a, a pretty uh pretty lady back then, and I, I wasn't upset. No, I wasn't upset either. I was just saying like the line like logically just didn't work yeah i know same what you mean. thing with same thing with like a guy my like a guy my size benching 800 pounds like it's just well yeah. they should have curdled it with a little sarcasm and it, it would have yes. hit exactly <sighs> movies okay so we're moving on to uh bob's uh <laughs> test number five the worst production all right let me see there we go. the worst movie ever made presents worst production Right. So yeah, the 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 problem with this movie, aside from the fact that it got made, because that was honestly my first <laughs> my first idea was the producers are the problem. The fact that they actually yeah. produced it is the problem. Yeah. So that, that that that's not fun enough. So I'm not going to do that. So and this this has come up several times. So let's see if you guys agree. I I wrote down that um, it's it's a flaw that really resulted in a lack of like continuity and any adherence to any rules whatsoever. So basically I say that no rules really existed without being immediately broken in order to make up for like bad writing or even worth acting. I do. For example, so the the control of the soul, remember that like one, Mm -hmm. one half controls the soul. So Mm -hmm. he controls the soul. When he does that, he's pretty unbeatable. He can pretty much become a shadow and choke you out. And what can you do? You could do nothing. Yes. Yeah. Then he gets control of the body and he's lamer than he was when he was just the soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, all he a, did was, you know. Yeah. It's a very good thing that we put this at test number five instead of later because uh, <laughs> I'm that now. Now, yeah. now you're stepping on my toes, Bob. <laughs> instead <laughs> of me stepping on yours. Uh, I completely, completely agree. Yeah. There are um, like the. How about the secret hiding place? I'll just steal this from the casual now and we'll talk about it. How about the secret hiding place for the power core that has a sign on it that says, please use other door? Mm-hmm. Right. They were actually yeah. being polite to people that were trying to sneak into their secret hiding space because yeah. it sends you down like a mine shaft that you could maybe die or whatever. Yeah. 
no, there actually was a, a another door where you can just like very uh, gently walk right into the secret yeah. hiding place. Apparently, so yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean, Bob. That there was no sense of continuity and uh, r- literally no rules. Yeah, and and, and uh, we can get into loopholes when loopholes come up. But I, I was originally thinking the adaptation from a video game was uh, one of the problems because the video game didn't have much of a story. Uh, uh, did you guys? ever watched the video game it's I a never, side scroll, I've isn't never, it i've never it's played a side scroll and literally the first five seconds of the video game this gang punches a girl in the stomach and she doubles over and they carry her away and the rest of the game is just you trying to get her back yeah oh, okay sounds like final fight yeah it's it's basically Which super mario brothers but you know yeah <laughs> less fantasy but but yeah. it's uh it, that's the whole story so the fact they had yeah. to do something with it or felt like they had to do something with it was irritating, but n- not uh, the the major fault of the of the movie. Um, do you remember? I I don't remember the um girl who's in the movie for not very long. That's like their mentor. Um, yes, I don't know her name, but yeah, I know her. Had they had um, sh- what's his fucking name? I I I'm sorry, I just won't remember the bad guy. Okay. <laughs> punch her in the stomach and take her away um, until she gives him the location of the medallion and their mm-hmm. um, mission is to get her back. Right. That would have been I more true to the video. I was thinking, I was thinking she wasn't really dead like the fir- until the third act. I'm like, ah, they, they're not going to, they're not going to bring her back. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I thought she I, was too. I thought she was dead, but I also when, before I watched the movie, I was hoping for a scene where they punched someone in the stomach. Yeah. I'm like, well, I, I I've got something for you in the next test coming up. That's oh, it's good, on good the point. same it's it's in the same uh on the same vein, but not the same thing. So yeah, so in general, lack of continuity, lack of rules, it just it, it, it went to like Rob said, and to cover up bad writing, but unfortunately they didn't use the writing to cover up <laughs> yeah. everything else. Yes. <laughs> no, it, it it was uh definitely just a shit show. Mm-hmm. Like a complete shit show. Um, okay, I'm just going to jot that down so that we uh, can compare it to the cat in the hat sure. uh, and its flaws. So, <clears throat> uh, Bob, just give me a, a quick like synopsis again. Oh, uh, I, I'll, I'll say it's n- n- continuity and rules completely out the window. Okay. okay. Uh, so I'll say continuity, no rules, just so I can fit it on this. Uh, yeah. Little uh, new rules. Eight by eleven. Okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, let's move it on to test number six, the most offensive. Damn it! I am tired of being Santa Claus. <laughs> you get your together and you get your ass in the damn car. Basically, we're just going to compare how offensive this movie is to the last, the, the okay. champion. Um, starting with two blatant Marion bendover moments. That's a bad one. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned I, uh, one before when she goes to pick up the device, but she also takes the grate off of, uh, you know, the bad guys, uh, you know, whatever it is, like Tower, and she yeah. like, is like, follow me, and then she like, I mean, the camera zooms in like uh, basically the center of the camera was aiming right into her intestines. It was <laughs> <Yeah>. that late. Uh, <laughs> number two, Lash, you stay for sexy time. You guys heard this in the clip before. Yeah, it, he's he's implying right. that he's going to use his uh, lady minion for uh, sex. And mm-hmm. that's not. It it takes. It's cool that they had an empowered lady character who is a strong fighter. I don't know yeah. if she exists in the game. I I never played it. Um, but then they kind of immediately cheapen her character by making her a sex object. Yeah, he was one of I the mean, few parts that were in the game. It was a female. It was several females that had the same uh, design in the game, and mm-hmm. they had whips. Oh, okay, I got you. Ah. But which is which is sexualized to begin with, but you didn't have to for the movie. You can have her have a whip <laughs> mm-hmm. as a Indiana Jones style weapon. 
that actually yeah. has function and not make it sexualized. But then with one cheap little line that like, I don't know, is supposed to make you a quarter horny. Like it doesn't really even do anything. Right. So I, I just right. don't understand. Yeah. What's in it was offensive. It's, the thing, it's like they wanted sex appeal, but like, I don't know. Like, I, I like to think of myself to be like somewhat classy where it's like, I don't know. Like you don't have to like do a fucking like up the butt shot with the camera to, it, it was you, bad. You can like nod it to bad. it. You can like nod to like, oh, she's got a nice figure. You don't have to be like, oh, we're gonna shove this fucking fish eye lens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like literally part your cheeks because we can't get the <laughs> lens in there uh, <laughs> far enough. And yeah. to make matters worse, the Lee brothers are fighting over who gets to go in the tunnel after her, so they can look at her butt in the dark the entire climb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck. Uh, yeah. Number three, a Bobo farts, uh, and I wrote spinach funnel, which wouldn't work. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> she's like funneling. She's funneling fucking raw spinach. Like it's like the um, spinach from the tube. <laughs> it's a spinach that's like in a block in the freezer aisle, but like <laughs> right. melted to room temp. You're supposed to make like spinach artichoke dip with it. Yeah, uh, but instead she's apparently funneling it with no liquid. I mean that shit's just getting yeah. clogged. He's he's just pretending to be suffering at yeah. that point so that she doesn't uh, find a different punishment for him. Because, yeah. <laughs> and then he rips some farts, which he's going to do anyway, because yeah. uh, they're flirting the line between like he's super fat and he's super muscly now. I don't know yeah. how we're supposed to feel about a Bobo, but on a Bobo, the subject, uh, a Bobo just punches some guy. Rob, you, uh, yeah. we, we saw this clip. Uh, Bob, I think did you send that to our like little... Yeah. Lackey, it, it, yeah, it, it made me laugh really hard. <clears throat> yeah, he just, he's yeah. just like, and he's actually a good guy at this point. Like, you don't quite know that he turned the corner, uh, but he comes into like, I, I want to say it's the maniac. It's, it's not the maniacs though, right? Where it, it, it's in who who the fuck knows where the scene is set? But there's all <laughs> yeah. these like gang members that are fighting and stuff, and he comes like lumbering out of a door, and some guys like, hey, you're like fat. And he just like smacks the fuck, and he just <laughs> punches him score in the nose, like. And he, you, you can't like if you're a martial artist, you're not supposed to fuck somebody up because you're yeah. a lethal weapon, right? Like, look yeah. at this guy, and he's just going around punching people. It's it's just not right. I will be getting a clip for that up on the TikTok, but um, oh, Amazon, God. Amazon, which I watched it on, doesn't let you do a screen capture when you take okay. a screenshot of the movie. It um, okay. the screen it's a black screen. So. It's on Tubi. Uh, yeah, so I'll try it on Tubi tonight, and then um, uh, YouTube might have it too. So yeah, it, it'll, okay. it'll work out. Uh, I've got one more, and it it does have to do with Lash again. Okay, uh, it's not what you think though. Lash is literally like chained against a pole mm -hmm. because um, Marion cut her lash, her like whip, and uh, yeah. then chains her to a pole. Some gang member just decides to knock her out. Well, she's tied to a pole. He comes over and fucking punches her square in the face. Just some random guy. Yeah. And she gets knocked out. I don't yep. know what the payoff was supposed to be for that, but I was yeah. appalled. She's incapacitated. Yeah. She's like, let me get one more in. Then I can tell my friends I knocked <laughs> 10 people out last night. Yeah. Fucking weird. All right. Um, let's play our mini game now, guys. All right. This will help us Good. determine. Uh, What's what's more offensive, the cat in the hat or double dragon? Okay. Starting okay. with my first comparison here. Knocking out a tied up woman. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or son of a beep in a kid's I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with knocking out a tied up woman because <laughs> Double Dragon is also kind of a kid's movie. Like, like young adult, I guess, or preteen okay. tween. Um and he's like in any context, it's just not cool. <laughs> I mean, like kids can swear words. Kids swear like a lot. So sure, yeah. A adding insult to injury is definitely uh, worse. Okay, so we're going uh, knocking out a tied up woman. That's unanimous. Yeah, blatant yes. bendovers, or <laughs> the wet dream jokes of a ten year old that the cat in the hat decided to make. 10 year old it's creepy it's, it's a I, grown man I making agree. fun of a 10 year old's nocturnal emissions um <laughs> whereas like i don't know um she's I, I i had to google her age i was like i, I don't want to be a creepy guy but like she's she was 22 she's yeah 
that's fine. She 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 knew the joke was she knew the gag was she bends over and they look at her butt. So I mean like I'm okay yeah. with that. Just like in all contexts. Whereas yeah. like a kid's like, be, like on the set having that joke said to them and they got to be like okay with it because they're on the payroll or whatever. Yeah, the kids. Yeah, you can't make fun of bedwetting in a kids movie because too many kids do it. Yeah. Right, and and it was it was very disgustingly sexualized in the joke. Yeah. Um, so I completely agree. So we're at one, one, which is, uh, why I wrote down one more. Um, and I think it has an obvious answer. Okay. Uh, a Bobo farts. Yeah. Or Mrs. Kwan. Oh, Mrs. Kwan. (laughs) That's the obvious. Okay. I agree. I I didn't have much more, uh, for double dragon because cat in the hat was just super offensive. Uh, yeah. So let me jot down the winner for test number six. And while I'm at it, why don't we just uh, quickly talk about the dialogue and production? Okay. Uh, yeah, what's good. worse, the dialogue for Double Dragon or Cat in the Hat? Oh, shit. Cat in the Hat's a hard one. Cat in the Hat with no hesitation because it, it could have rhymed all the jokes. None of the jokes landed. And I think in, in, in Double Dragon, like none of the jokes really landed, but like they could have landed. They're just like, they, they landed like, a little off from where they should have. Yeah. But Cat, Cat in the Hat just, I don't know, nothing really stuck for me. Yeah, the dialogue in Double Dragon at least fit the surroundings it was in. Yeah. Where Cat in the Hat, it was supposed to be a kid's movie and the jokes were anything but. So yeah, yeah, my, yeah. my immediate inclination was that uh, Double Dragon was worse, but Rob definitely turned that around because it was supposed to run like the movie should have run at least yeah. largely run but also yeah. bob you, it um it, it definitely puts another feather in the hat for a cat in the hat no uh yeah. plan was intended uh in the fact that it's totally and almost wholly inappropriate so we'll go with uh the cat in the hat dialogue is worse yes cool and for yeah. acting um i'm actually going to go double dragon I think the acting in Double Dragon was just wholesale worse. Yeah. I agree. Like, we, we talked about last week, the Cat in the Hat actors did what they were asked to do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure Robert Patrick did. And he was the best yeah. that they had to offer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we will go with uh, Double Dragon and worse acting. Mm-hmm. It's going to make for an interesting... I really thought that the Cat in the Hat wouldn't, uh, wouldn't lose even in the tournament in, uh, yeah. at the end of three seasons from now. But uh, yeah. who knows at this point? It's a toss-up. <laughs> okay, uh, let's do the shit coin, which is going to be slightly different this week, guys. Uh, Rob and I are going to do kind of a uh, shit coin non-starters segment because we don't have a real shit coin uh, for this episode. So Rob and I are going to uh, read over the um, shit coins that I thought had a funny start, but never really went anywhere. So, Rob, um, I will uh, just let you know when we flip, I guess, to the next one that starts a a new non-starter. This won't take as long as as you think it will because they're all relatively short because uh, they didn't go anywhere. So uh, take it away with Alan Harbo, I I suppose, Rob. Well, we'll take it away with the bumper. Oh, yeah. What's up? Do you do how? HYD. Well, I'm doing. About how you? Great. Have you seen my new car I just posted? Can you help advertise my company's prod tag UCT on your Instagram page? Say your price. We gonna pay to you. Interested. Am I am. Have first only to guide a young lady forest through. I must. <laughs> Fold Motor Company. Just to post what the company's selling and you will get pay for it. When 800 years old you are. Heard of Fold Motor Company. You have not. <laughs> uh, that's. <laughs> he literally. He literally didn't get back to me. After that. Yeah. Uh, maybe he knew I was doing Master Yoda. Um, this one is a continuation of last week's, actually, um, where I ended with I'm getting a little TO'd, and Bob mentioned that he thought it was funny that I couldn't even be brought to saying ticked off. <laughs> uh, so if you want to follow it up after the yeah. OK, Rob, we'll just read the next message. OK, sounds good. 
Hello, how are you doing today? Well, I didn't mean to bother you, but I do love to spend a few minutes of your time. I want to share with you a topic that benefits both parties, can I? You know, you sent me the same message on April 12th at 2.16 p.m., right? Like, verbatim. (laughs) He did not respond to that, so we'll move on to the next. (laughs) All right, this is um, DJ to the world. Hello. Hello. How are you? Très bien, comrade. How are you doing on this glorious Monday? I'm good. Can you help me with a little something? Perhaps. It all depends on what kind of person you are. I'm trying to validate my account. After several attempts, it gave me an option where I should ask a friend to. <clears throat> oh. Uh. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I, uh, where should I ask a friend to? It's blocked off because you blocked the account. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, no chance. Go with God, dum dum. Oh, there we go. Like a help friend login option. Can you help me out? You are an unsavory scammer. I hope you get bounced from the platform. I'm going to block and report you. <laughs> <laughs> and then this la- is this one, uh, Melissa, Melissa de la Cruz. Yeah, um, this is the last one. All right. I, no, there might be one more after that, actually. Oh, well, anyway. Hi. Oh, yeah, I'm compete- you're right, you're right. All right. Hi, I'm competing for an ambassador position on an Instagram influencer program. Can you vote for me? You're a lion, cheating, no gooder. Will you vote for me? <laughs> I did not continue the conversation after that. <laughs> and this is uh, Miss Jane. Hello, Wave Emoticon. How are you doing? Well, I am doing good. Are you? I'm good. I'm from SA, but currently in California. And you? Can I talk to you about your car's extended warranty? Okay. It says here that your warranty ran out on April 10th, 2022. And in order uh, to keep the warranty current, you'll have to arrange a payment with our billing department. Would you like to, me to connect you? Uh, <laughs> she never answered back. Go figure. Left on scene. <laughs> she contacted me. And I. <laughs> I I was just shocked that she said okay, like like go ahead and talk to me about my car's extended warranty. She reached out to me. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. Uh, so those were our non-starters. This is this is what happens when they realize that I'm full of shit immediately and don't say anything back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's throw it to the catch-all, and then we're going to do a couple more fun segments, uh, including fact or no fact, and Rob's alternate ending. And then we'll uh, hit our bad credit names and compare the movies. We'll go home. I also have a um, an ad read. Rob, why am I doing this to you, man? What What is it about you? I You don't deserve <laughs> this kind of treatment from me, man. That's because they're really fucking stupid. Here we you go. You don't fucking deserve it. They're great. They're always funny. I always laugh. I should want to hear this. And I'm skipping over you again. I, I'm such a piece of shit. Everybody email us. And tell me what a piece of shit I am. I need to hear it. That way I don't ever fucking do this again. Go ahead, Rob. We'll get through this. Today's episode of The Worst Movie Ever Made is brought to you by producers Max Glibble and Stuart Horschnitz Burgers daring escape from being locked in a garage with a running car that has a potato stuck in the muffler. Will they escape? Probably not. Will vengeance be exacting and merciless? No. Who will help dissolve Glibbles and Horschnitz Burgers estate? Surviving family, if we had to venture a guess. Max Glibble and Stuart Horschnitz Nurnerberger are dead. (laughs) (laughs) And there's the end of that saga. (laughs) So look, I don't know if you guys can see, and my writing's terrible, but it says, um, let's see where it is so I can focus. Uh, This is totally unnecessary for our audio listeners. Uh, So right over, I'm going to point at the worst production, right? Yeah. It says Rob's ad read, or ad madness right there. And I just, (laughs) I think because I didn't underline it like I usually do. Uh, I'm I'm defending myself only because I don't want you to think that I didn't include you in that. I I, I (laughs) feel like it's all good. It's all good. So uh, catch all right. Yeah, I guess. Unless there's something else I'm forgetting. Like fucking butt idiot that I am. Whatever <laughs> whatever that is. Alright, uh the catch all.
Uh, have you guys heard of Moonstone Entertainment? No, never. Maybe. I've probably I seen like the title of- card in front of a movie or something. Came up right in the beginning before the movie started, and I was like, what yeah. the fuck is Moonstone Entertainment? Never heard of that. Hmm. Not a good start. Um, we talked no. about this already, but Robert Patrick. I just wrote his name. Yeah. Why do you stoop so low? Yeah. Have you guys ever seen Tag Team Martial Arts? No. No. Me neither. I think that's entirely made up. Uh, yeah. they, they want to deliver the Warriors, but we get Street Fighter instead. Yeah. Uh, all these different gangs, it, it's actually really cool. And in like that retro sense of watching the Warriors, it, it makes you feel very um, like the 70s. It was actually pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. But the movie does a good job of pretending that it was. Yeah. This movie does not deliver the like gangs are cool feel that you get from the Warriors. Yeah. <clears throat> the we're going to go into some graphics um, discussion here. The tactical tracker that a Bobo has before he's turned into whatever mm-hmm. with his like right hand man who gets stabbed in the eye in their truck. Yeah. Oh my Christ. I mean, could it look worse? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you could just about not even read tactical tracker because the graphics mm-hmm. were so bad. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, it, it like, it looked like minesweeper. Yeah, it did. It had like minesweeper graphics. Uh, keep more garbage on hand. I'm saying, if you have a if you have a fucking like um, DeLorean that yeah. eats garbage, why don't yeah. you have a gigantic fucking bag in the back of see the car next to whatever her name is? Why yeah. are they stored on garbage? It's literally fucking everywhere. This is a po- post apocalyptic setting. There's garbage yeah. all over the fucking place, and they have to debate whether or not they're going to throw the cheese whiz that they have in the glove compartment that yeah. they snack on. Into the thing. Look, keep a giant pile of garbage in the truck. Then, yeah, I understand. I, I've, I've I've got some friends that have severe like executive dysfunction, and like you don't want to get in their passenger seat because there's so many fucking like empty Starbucks cups, and, like and like fast food bags, and you're just like water you know, bottles, sitting with, your, sitting with your knees up like that. And yeah, it's like all you need is one of those friends to like cart around. Plenty, plenty of garbage. Plenty yes. of garbage. Yeah, no kidding. I feel like the Lee brothers, uh, Ugg and Home, would be good at like. Keeping water bottles and Gatorade and Powerade bottles yeah. around, you know, they seem like the type to not clean yeah. their house. Oh. Yeah, they're they're uh, basically have a, a foster mom. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and she's only four years older than. Them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there were uh, Bob. This one's I'm throwing kind of your way, but Rob, I wanted to know if you uh, saw this as well. Okay, you know what? You guys know what? Um, I think they're called cigar burns or cigarette burns. Um, yeah. in the film industry, you know, what those are it's like a little black hole at the top right and, of, yeah. of the screen, so that the person changing the uh film at, at the theater knows when, yeah. like, when to prepare the uh film to change over. Yeah, I, it's 90. We said this is 94, right? Yeah, yeah, they have literal cigar burns in the top corner in multiple scenes, and I was shocked. That means that we've got the same exact version of the movie that they're playing at the movie theaters. They didn't also, they didn't bother to give us the edited version with, you know, without those. Okay. So that, that might not be the movie's fault. Um, it's a big thing with, um, properties being acquired and licensed so fast. Like, uh, there's, um, I think I may have mentioned it on the show. It might've been off air though, where like, there, there's sitcoms where like the, all everything's shot during like daytime and they add like a nighttime filter for the nighttime scenes. And like oh, they, they put them on like Disney Plus or Hulu, and they got the copy from like FX or FXX or whatever, and it's all daylight. And then they have to go back and like retroactively like swap out the episodes. Mm. So it okay. could be that they bought the rights for the movie, and that's the first one that was available to them. And like they're, they're going to sneakily switch it out like three months right. from now it's or just, a year from now. It's just odd because it's never in a it's never in a spot where it's like you're going to be blocking out somebody's face or anything crucial. Yeah. Like it's usually like blue sky or it's like a white wall or, or yeah. something that you're not going to necessarily yeah. notice because it's only for a flash yeah. of a second. Couldn't you, um, being a major you know movie production company, yeah, just match that color and put it over that burn? That's a good point. And also uh, to, to your point, 
on the theatrical trailer, three minutes and 21 seconds in, <laughs> the kid jumps right by a boom mic. <laughs> One of the brothers jumps right by a boom mic. I'll, 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 I'll check you guys the clip after the um. Yeah, please do. Show. That's hilarious. That's <laughs> Uh, all right, moving on, unless you guys have uh, anything else to say on that. Uh, I think I'm good. I, just... I have a loophole, but if you're not done, I'm, you might already. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I've got more. Uh, I just I just nice. was debating whether or not uh, you had something to say on that, Bob, because I thought I saw you leaning into the mic as if you had something. No, no, to no say. You, you definitely have. Uh, you hit all the all the marks on that one. Uh, OK, so it, in this case, let's open the dialogue about the ridiculous amounts of exposition. There is there is one scene in particular that very much pissed me off and it's when their mentor uh is having dinner with them at their like apartment over mm-hmm. like a, you know a, like a joey and chandler type table in the kitchen and yeah. um she just clearly explained the entire plot so far and then essentially explained how the plot is going to uh work its way out for the r- remainder of the movie and yeah. i was appalled at the amount of exposition but then i found that there were uh, scenes where they're like, like the um, in front of the uh, ocean or giant lake setting mm-hmm. that we were talking about before, or they're just like walking on train tracks that are raised above the city in in New Angeles, mm-hmm. um, and th- it's it's literally just exposition where they're like, yeah. okay, now we're going to attack uh, Shokagugi. Uh, yeah. And we're gonna go, you know, we're gonna get the other half of the minute. It, it, the amount of exposition takes you out of the movie because you can clearly see that their dialogue is so poor that they don't know how to subtly sneak it in. You know what I mean? They're just ramming it into your face. Yeah. It's it's like college level, but like community college where you have to make a video that tells the story. They used all their writing on on bad jokes. That's where all the writing went. Yeah, it's true. That's that's a good point. I completely agree. Uh, maybe don't hide the medallion around Jimmy's neck if you don't want yeah. a bad guy to get it. In plain sight, not even under the shirt. It's no, it's right the there. It's right there. <laughs> uh, a Bobo, one big inflatable suit. Did you feel that way too? I felt like he was yeah. an airman. Yeah. Yeah, it was, when I, was it, I don't know if this was like a thing for like just a... Not comic book, but um, video game adaptations mm-hmm. from like the early nineties. Yeah, there's this weird fetishization fetishization of um, hey, let's strap this guy to a gurney and pump him full of toxic chemicals yes. and make him really big. Yeah, Street Fighter, they did that as well. Yeah. Um, and maybe not so much in Mortal Kombat. Um, they, did, they just had Goro. Yeah, they, they, they had they Goro. Goro they did do that. Yeah, they did strap them into. Yeah, that's a good point. The Mario Brothers movie, they strap them into the like mind altering, like somehow yeah. that makes you physically bigger machine. Yeah. yeah. Bane was Batman, one of the Batman only other Robin. few. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Batman, Batman and Robin, too. Jesus, yeah. Um, right. Bane. Bane and Batman yeah. and Robin is another like pump full of toxins kind of guy. That's weird. What yeah. a through line. Like every single one of them. Yeah. All right, yeah, so they watched as a cheap cop out, <laughs> but oh. Bobo was in the actual video game. But his character on the video game just had a bigger head. That was pretty much yeah. it. Oh no, shit. Okay, so yeah. why is he just like a a bane then? Weird. Yeah. Okay, so I know her name. Her name is Satori. Okay. So- you know how I know that because I wrote I wrote they locked the gate on Satori and then yeah. they couldn't unlock it somehow. Yeah. They like literally flick the lock in the warehouse where they're getting attacked by bad guy and his mm-hmm. minion because she is uh, possessed by his like shadow demon. Yeah. But then when he leaves her, she's locked in there and they can't figure out how to fucking get her out. Unlock yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Would have been the easiest. Annoying. There was the um, the old explosion jump that is yeah. like, you know they they uh as soon as satori dies in that explosion they're like pushed an extra five feet because of the <clears throat> velocity and like strength of the explosion behind them yes um can i add something to that this is something that's yeah. been pissing me off on, in these kind of movies yeah 
why are people doing front flips and back flips when a, there's not a move after that? It's like they they need to oh, jump yeah, off the yeah. car and run. It's like let's do a front yeah. flip off the car and run. It's like there's no like why are you expect if you're going to be using up energy like fighting bad guys? Why are you going to expend like strength and like stamina on like this extraneous front flips and like weird like scissor kicks and stuff? I know exactly the spot you're talking about. It's right after the mailman air mail yeah. spot. Jimmy is running through the like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to Foot Clan junkyard yeah. uh, set that they have. And he decides to leap from one car to another. And then when he lands on the car, he does like a like full front flip to yeah. land for no reason. Yeah, that pissed me off too. I didn't write it down, but you're right. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I made a minute note of that. I thought the same exact thing. I thought, why are they doing flips? Well, he's just moving from one level to another. Yeah, <laughs> like, and more he had to like he had to like set himself up for it too. Like he had to get into the right posture so that he knew he could land it, you know? It was like, like a running jump and it ended with a kick on someone. It yeah, cool. that would have been better. Definitely. Because you're wi- you're winding up to kick harder. It's it makes sense, I guess, right? But Yeah. Uh, while we're on the chronological like order timeline, after like, right after that explosion extra jump thing that happens, right? Yeah. Why didn't Soko Douche um, search the area for Billy and Jimmy immediately mm-hmm. after the building blows up? Because they have to be within like I don't know two hundred feet. They literally yeah. just left the building. He they have the medallion. He's yeah. just like, I will get the gangs on my side and we'll find them and we'll search. Like, he, he, they are within the, the smallest radius that yeah. you could possibly hope to have. Send your minions in each direction, call the gangs, and now find them. They're right here. They're right yeah. here in the city. Find them now instead of getting yeah. into your limo and driving away. That really bugged yeah. me. That they was just, totally they had to get the movie past an hour 10, probably. <laughs> That's the only yeah. reason I can think of. It's like this, this thing has a short runtime. We got to get it at least to like an hour twenty-five. <laughs> right. Uh, control over the soul apparently means that you just become Paper Mario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll leave it at that. The Maniacs Mindshare are convinced to follow uh, Kabaro Soko Toyota uh, after he kills their leader. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's a quick introduction to the Maniacs clan, and yeah. there's like a hundred of them, and they have a leader, the guy that we've seen in, in uh, Weird Science, and I think mm-hmm. uh, the original Mad Max movie, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, like, he's he was very, in the original, he, he was in the original The Hills Have Eyes. Yeah, very strange looking character. We should probably know his name because he's been in enough movies, and we're, mm-hmm. we, we claim to be movie buffs, but I don't know his name. Um, but he like shadow kills this guy by choking him out, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then all of the without hesitation, without discussing it, without looking at each other and nudging each other with elbows, they all agree they're gonna follow um, uh, Suka Toyota and his it, whatever you know his agenda. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, I got um, in that scene. Uh, in that exact, in that exact same scene, we are talking about a gangs that I think they even talk about it during that scene about it. we don't follow rules, we don't follow people, yeah. we, we're, we're anarchists, but they're all very organized in rows. They assemble, and, yeah, <laughs> okay. and packs, and it's it's perfectly organized, and not a single one of them jumps to save the guy. Or it, it's nope. like for being anarchists, they 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 follow, you know, they they do assemble very well. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a that's a really fair point. I mean, it was like, like they didn't even have ushers that tell you where your seat is. Like every time I go to a concert or I go to a next game or something, I have to yeah. ask the usher where B twelve in section one eighteen is because yeah. I don't know. But all these guys apparently know exactly where they're sitting for the event. It, that's mm-hmm. that's impressive. You know, yeah. they must have gotten some kind of memo beforehand. Penny sent them something that said you're going to be sitting here. You know, who knows? Mm-hmm. Um. Good thing there was a two-person working jet ski machine in the Mohawk shed that they didn't notice at first. They tried to they, make that. Go ahead. And they knew how to drive it immediately without by yeah. just looking yeah. at it once. They found a caution tape and steel uh, motorcycle that fell apart. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was pretty cool looking that Billy was yeah. really happy about. And then they're like, oh, that was a really... 
That motorcycle falling apart was so strange. What was that all about? I agree. I don't know. I like why is it their pride and joy if it's not even fully assembled? Yeah. Uh, but we don't to that. Yeah, we don't we don't see the two person ski uh, jet ski thing at all yeah. until it comes out of the shed. But to yeah. just piggyback on that a little bit. Uh, not only do they escape with that two, um, with that very convenient two person jet ski, but they are followed by two jet skis that like jump off of a ramp or some shit. Like, yep. like the Mohawks knew that they were going to escape in the two jet ski thing. But the people yep. on the jet skis are in full black leather with black <laughs> motorcycle helmets. Not at all the look that the Mohawks are going for. So I don't know where they came from. The completely different gang. <laughs> and that's probably like the least safe thing to wear while you're jet skiing because if you go underwater like leather's not porous if, you're, if, if your no. suit gets like stuff with water you're just gonna sink to the bottom aren't you <laughs> isn't that how it would work yeah and they're uh in uh, the sunlight yeah yeah just sweating their asses off at the very least yeah um the power core secret entrance we talked about so i'll move on to the condition of their hands after they fall down the elevator shaft, holding on to the fucking cable. Mm, no for the real elevator. burn, yeah. Forget it. Forget it. They couldn't, yeah. none of them, uh, including uh, Marion, yeah. none of them could use their hands to that. They would be completely no. ripped apart. Or that yeah. would yeah. That'd be like eight months worth of healing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least. Easy. Easy. I mean, they might have stripped down the bone because that's not even, that's not even rope. That's cable. Like yeah, that's metal, metal that would just shred their hands away. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Koga Shuka Cola uh, killed their father, of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, giant <laughs> basketball zombie. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. What was it? He said, you know, good to see you again, but he, obviously it was Shuko, but yeah. why did they make it not look like that? Like, I couldn't tell. It took me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I didn't immediately... I, I also almost wrote that in worse dialogue, like I said, go, come back to this line, because I was like, why is the tall basketball like zombie, like, saying it's good to see you again? I was like, did we miss something? But then it turned out yeah. it was Shuko Coca-Cola. Yeah. And, you know, that explained itself, but not at first. Um, no gang whose power is in power of numbers ever uses their strength in numbers. Yeah. There's a hundred of them and they decide to go one on one, maybe two at one, uh, mm -hmm. at all times. Billy and Jimmy are very lucky that the gangs want to prove their individual prowess instead of yeah. using what gangs are formed for strength in numbers. Yeah. Why don't you just surround them and all just fire one bullet? <laughs> You'll be, yeah. you'll be done. Just everybody grab a pipe and beat the fuck out of these guys. I don't care how much karate they know. <laughs> when when the Lee brothers first entered the like the uh uh I don't know that wide open space in the daytime when they were like way outnumbered, my first thought was, well, they're not gonna fight all these guys. There's way too many of them. <laughs> yeah. 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 What or a joke. was I mistaken? <laughs> yeah, what a joke. Uh Jimmy just tosses Mary and bolt cutters out of nowhere. So <laughs> Like Lash like goes to whip her and then she ducks and there's a pole there so it gets like entangled on itself and Jimmy's just like hey and tosses her fucking bolt cutters so she's like ha ah, yeah. and snaps the whip with the bolt cutters yeah. and Lash loses where did he get those were those conveniently <laughs> laying there or did uh, he know that this spot was coming did they discuss this beforehand what happened there bolt cutter storage duh <laughs> <laughs> haven't you heard of it it's very, every hero very, has very, very looney tunes like you know like the cartoon <laughs> just pulled out of nowhere yeah, yeah seriously um the power core and the mohawks just agree to stop fighting in order to watch billy and jimmy fight yeah gang warfare in this factory everybody's trying to kill each other all of a sudden the two brothers yeah. who some people in there don't even know why they're relevant are fighting and everybody stops we're just going to be at peace right now. It's like Christmas yeah. uh, in World War II. Comparing powers of villains. Starting with, literally his name is Armless Tiger Man. He was a comic book character. <laughs> he was right. a villain who had no arms, but he had really sharp teeth and he can run really fast. So okay. like, if he grabbed a hold of you, he could bite you, but he couldn't grab a hold of you because he didn't have arms. 
right. and he also worked with the Nazis. If you were doubting whether or not he was a villain, uh, yeah. he definitely was. Asbestos lady, who okay. <laughs> who did not kill you with asbestos? She just gave herself a flame retardant asbestos suit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or paste pot Pete, who shot a liquid adhesive from guns he had on his sides that became impervious to most things. Those are the three up against our villain, um, Shoka Gugu, uh, who becomes two blue demons who have like kind of lightsaber swords uh, when punched back together, lose the medallion of power. I would rather yeah. be Paper Mario in this situation. You yeah. guys tell me, is it the worst villain power ever or is one of Armless Tiger Man, Asbestos Lady or pa- Paste Pot Pete worse than that? Asbestos Lady seems like a, uh, a real slow burn there. I'm not sure I'd, yeah. I'd go with her. <laughs> Was that uh, <laughs> pun intended? And not, and not at first, but I'll take it. <laughs> uh, we going Asbestos Lady for the record? Because yeah. I'll put that. Yeah, okay, so that's okay. Asbestos no, that's Lady. That's the lamest shit I've ever heard in my life. Okay, well, you couldn't, you couldn't shoot her with flames. Just saying. I mean, you could have just take longer. You could shoot her with a gun, but yeah. not flames. Okay. okay, let's move on to Bob Hasek's fact or no fact. The worst movie ever made presents Fact or No Fact. Okay, welcome to the always entertaining fact or no fact. The facts and no facts uh, segment. I what did I call it this week? I called it uh, double faction. Uh, as the oh, one. nice double like faction. <laughs> double faction. So this is where we, I give you five bits of information that may or may not be true, and you have to discern which one which one is true. And I'm actually excited when we do our good movie because I'm going to flip it and do one lie. Oh, nice. All right. I, I realized I was I was close to doing it this time, and I realized, no, I, I'm not going to change the game now. Okay. So uh, starting with Alyssa Milano. <clears throat> yes. So as, as you know, 1994 is when this came out. She turned down a role in Pulp Fiction to co-star in this movie because she wanted to do a bigger budget rather than something independent. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, second one. Uh, the, the the river that they filmed the boat chase scene in actually has caught fire before because of so much pollution. Okay. okay. Uh, Robert Patrick now. Robert Patrick was in Terminator 2, as you all know. Mm-hmm. That was two to three years before this movie. Apparently, he yeah. took a break that entire time just to cash in on Terminator. And this is the first movie he picked to do afterwards. And he really regrets not taking other work. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fourth one, the police chief's son in the movie. We we didn't even bring up the police chief once. I can't believe it. Uh, was actually his it. son in real life. Okay, and okay. Uh, you mentioned the crow. Brandon Lee was originally approached to play one of the brothers because the brothers were originally supposed to be twins in the video game, but he was already shooting another movie called The Crow that same year. How about that? Okay, so mm. we're talking Alyssa Milano turned on Pulp Fiction. Uh, the river actually caught fire. Robert Patrick didn't do, any, didn't do anything else between Terminator 2 and this. Uh, the police chief's son was his real son, and Brandon Lee uh, was approached to do this, but he said, no, I'm doing The Crow. I think I'm torn between the river catching on fire because like that, that shit happens, um, unfortunately. And between that, Robert Patrick and Brandon Lee, I'm because that is 94 or 93 was they probably shot it in like 93. I'm going to go Robert Patrick because well, I think I, I think he regrets not doing anything between Terminator and this because we don't see him in much after. At least I not in my to my awareness. So Robert, uh, Rob, Patrick, Rob to, to comfort you a bit, I was going to, that was my option. That's what I was going to go with. All right. Basically for the reasons you just spelled out. Okay. I, I feel like I shouldn't, uh, just to punish Bob a little bit. I, <laughs> I should find another one that's plausible and go with that. So that we have a better chance of catching him out. Um, 
R- rivers catching fire. I have heard of this happening, but I feel like Lake Michigan. Right, you would need to have like some kind of oil spill or something because for like because because a river is going to dilute the uh, corrosive and polluting components relatively easily because the gallon yeah. of what like I mean it takes 151 proof for a liquor to catch on That's fire. True. So a river must be so ple- I, so I'm, I'm going to cancel out and catch fire. Uh, Brandon Lee, I can buy. I just feel like he was too good for this, which is yeah. why I'm going to say that Robert Patrick was. I was leaning that way because for him to end up in this movie, he must have had to like come crawling back to Hollywood. And maybe he took this role because he needed to prove something. But uh, on the flip side, Bob did say that Robert Patrick uh, was trying to have some fun with this role, which I don't feel like mm-hmm. you could do if it was your first role back. Um, That's so I'm, I'm not going to go with that, Rob. Um, it seems like the police chief's son is one of those uh, factoids that could be true, uh, could be false. How the hell do I have any, um, you know, which way do I lean? I, I don't know. And turn down Pulp Fiction for a. I, we know now that it's an eight million dollar budget, so it wasn't a very big budget film. Yeah. I'm gonna go, Police Chief's Son. How's that? Okay. Bye. All right, I'll take it away. So, Alyssa Milano, by the way, I think is almost my exact age. So I've been. Yeah. I, I, I I had crushes on her in almost everything she was in from when I was a kid all the way up. Pretty lady. <laughs> so, Mm. But she was not um, asked to do Pulp Fiction. That was totally made up. Okay. Um, Brandon Lee, uh, that was a good a good one because they do actually look alike, and they, they were do. supposed to be yeah. twins in the original. But no, he was he was just doing the crow, and uh, unfortunately passed during that filming. Mm. Um, the police chief's son was Alyssa Milano's brother. Ah, okay. In in real life. Mm-hmm. That was that was the, uh, that was my close to a real thing. Okay, Robert, Pat- Robert Patrick, I totally made that up. He was very very busy after Terminator Two. Was he? Like he wow. Was okay. Ton, he was in a ton of stuff. He actually even played the T one thousand in Wayne's World. How did you guys forget that one? Because <laughs> uh, I've never seen it. Um, oh. because because I prefer Wayne's World too. I only watched Wayne's World <laughs> the first one a couple times. I know I was really. I, I saw it in the theater. Oh, we yeah. died laughing in the theater. Um, but yeah, I've never he, seen he, it. I always that. assumed that I wouldn't like it, so I just never. He was it. also in uh, an alien abduction movie called Fire in the Sky. Robert Patrick. Okay, that was okay. He I, was I in the faculty one. in 1999 as well. He I was in the faculty. I remember he that. Was well, in yeah, that would have been tease. I think he was in strip tease. He was in okay. a ton of stuff, but he was very very busy. He he didn't take any breaks. That was okay. That up. So, yes, the Cuyahoga River in Ohio was where they filmed that river scene. Yes, that has caught fire many times, actually. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> I, know, just... I know one of the Great Lakes caught fire. I think Michigan. I think I want to say Lake Michigan because all the, all the pollutants from, like, the auto shops and stuff, auto factories and stuff. Yeah, but, right. I, yeah. I, yeah, I would think that it would have to be, like, a localized oil spill or something in that case. But maybe that river in Ohio is, like, right on a a factory that wastes oh, flammables or something. Who knows? Yeah. Well, yeah. When they, when they actually ran the explosions, the special effects team, they told the neighboring communities that they were going to be doing it, but they were still uh, tons of emergency calls uh, made to <laughs> the fire department. <laughs> yeah. Hunts How about that? <laughs> because they're so used to it catching on fire. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Let's throw out to Rob's alternate ending. Well, I can't wait. <laughs> Okay, this is this is a good one. You can do this, or you can do that, or you can do this, or you can do that, or you can do this, or you can do that. Just pick one. The poll went the other way, and we watched Tiptoes. Done. (laughs) (laughs) I wish we did. Uh, I had no words. I had no words. Like I just, I couldn't like all the different like similar names and just stupid things that just go off and never get resolved. I, I couldn't like land on something. So I was just like, okay, uh, the I ultimate want- endings. We just, we don't watch this shit. Yes. I, I like, um, right. and I want the listening audience to know that you did not select tiptoes. Uh, and I understand why, like you saw mm-hmm. 
the title picture that we posted on Instagram, we posted on TikTok, and we posted on Twitter. We put it all on our uh, our social media feeds, and you've never seen the the movie before. You don't know what it is. You think it's probably a rom com with Matthew McConaughey. It's literally yeah. little people, uh, and and it is going to be if we ever get it on yeah. uh, the most offensive movie we've ever done, <laughs> bar none, because cool. Peter Dinklage. Um, plays a character who has to constantly apologize for the fact that he's little, which is fucked up. And Gary Oldman <laughs> takes a role as a little person because they didn't hire somebody else to be Matthew McConaughey's little brother. And I don't mean a little brother. I mean older brother who's little. Okay. Anyway, well, that's what stuff. you chose to pass up for this shit. So yeah. fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I think that was you know, Bob or Rob's choice. Tiptoes. Yeah. It wasn't mine, obviously. Uh, moving on, name. moving on to bad credit names, and then we'll. Yeah. Uh, not the best week, but uh, I will um, ramp them up as I go along. Uh, Florent rents. Okay. Not Florence. Florent rents. Okay. Jerry Deets. Mm. Not as yeah. good as Dicky Deets. We had Dicky Deets a few weeks ago. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was good. Sun Dip, R. Shaw. <laughs> okay. That's uh. definitely like something you put Tostitos into that has artichokes in it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, SB Weathersby. Okay. Fun. Cool one. I will not be able to pronounce this. I'm, I'm going to give it my best. I, I might may or may not have said this a hundred times before the pod to, just to get ready for it. Uh, and I'm still going to fuck it up. Alfie. Answorth. Okay. Would you like me to spell the last name? Because I, I definitely Please. didn't say it right. I would love you to. A I N F W A R T H. Answorth. Okay. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I just had to write it down. Pat Stubbs. <laughs> Fun. Okay. He makes barbecue. Yeah. Harry House. <laughs> that's that's my favorite so far. Tom, Mr. Fusion Martinek. Mr. Fusion, of course, is not his middle name <laughs> in reality, but he goes by Mr. Fusion. Whatever right. that means. Uh Dave Stump. <clears throat> okay. Jelly Bean Benentez. Okay. Okay. Not in Brent, that's their name, Jelly Bean. According to the credits. Hmm. Herb Hickey. H E R B H I C K E I E. Herb, Herb. Herb okay. Hickey. And finally, John Swallow. That, uh, that sucks. <laughs> that fucking sucks. It totally does. All right, and then it's Okay. Uh, Cat in the Hat. Worst of its kind, negative 54.8 and worst. I think that obviously beats out negative 43.6 worst. Okay. I mean, there's there's no argument there, really. Uh, plot pitch, Bob and Rob both said no to Cat in the Hat, but they both said no to Double Dragon, and Cat in the Hat got a three-star, where Double Dragon got a two. So Double Dragon fights back a little here. Yeah. Dialogue, Cat in the Hat wins. Worst dialogue there. Mm-hmm. Should have rhymed. Shouldn't have been inappropriate. Yeah. Uh, acting. Double Dragon wins. We're at 2-2. Two yeah. two. Production. Now we need to decide now whether writing and direction in Cat in the Hat was worse than continuity and no rules in Double Dragon. Okay. How do you guys feel? Do you feel like the writing directing was worse in Cat in the Hat or the continuity with absolutely no rules in Double Dragon was worse? I don't know. I'm on the fence. Here. Mm, that's tough. Um, yeah, I, I, I almost don't want Cat in the Hat to to lose this because um, <clears throat> it's a far worse movie. But honestly, when when you're given a video game with almost no story, and your audience is going to be teenage kids who, uh, you know, who ha- have no attention span, yeah, maybe a maybe a movie with no rules, and uh, you know no continuity uh, is, isn't going to piss them off. Yeah. It doesn't matter as much. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to agree with Bob. Cause I'm like, like I was telling you at, at the beginning, like I, I was getting irrationally pissed off, but like it would kind of resolve with like, Oh, okay. That's, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Like it yeah, didn't yeah. like, it, it bothered me until it didn't. Whereas cat in the hat 
bothered me like, Two years entirely. Ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, I agree. And then Double Dragon was more offensive. Uh, so we are at a three to three tie. And as you know, we haven't had to use this yet. Um, I usually write in a little demerit section in case we come down right. to a three to three tie. And right. for me, I wrote the cat in the hat is completely inappropriate. Um, okay. And uh, that, that, yes, it's the most offensive, but it, the fact that the cat in the hat, and I can't, I feel like you both just passed the sentiment along, was exactly the opposite of what they were trying to deliver in a kid's movie. Uh, mm-hmm. That I, I feel like Double Dragon gets the pass here because they were trying to deliver a chaotic teen movie, and that's what we got. With Cat in the Hat, we yeah. were supposed to get a kid's movie, and we got the, like, 25% of dads will think this is funny, and yeah, we'll get the jokes. And that was who they were trying to deliver the movie to. Yeah, that's my take. How do you guys feel? I'm going to I'm going to agree with agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I do the same. I, like you said, I think it pretty much reflects what we said already about the purpose and the delivery. Uh, aside from all the other details, I think that, yeah. that speaks it for everything. OK, so uh, Cat in the Hat remains the worst movie of the season. Cool. Uh, and next week from a 75 percent to 25% margin kickboxer wins the day. Which I'm, I'm, glad I'm, actually, I'm glad that we don't have to watch Vantage Point because I, I went to see it in theaters. Yeah. Um, I used to go to a lot of movies. Like I, I would go to movies by myself because I, I had my, I had a band I was playing in six nights a week. I had all my college stuff and I was working and like Friday night, like all my friends were like back on campus. I'd be like, I'm going to go to a fucking movie. I don't have a show tonight. I'm going like, to watch. And I, I remember walking yeah. out like a third of the way through Vantage Point going, this fucking sucks. And I ended up like driving to like one of my friend's schools or whatever and just like hanging out for the night instead. Like I drove so like, like 40 miles. <laughs> so it's like boring bad. It's just they change vantage points. So like you see a president <laughs> get assassinated, right? And then, yes. then you see and like you're like, oh my god, the president's dead and there's chaos. And it, it, it does the whole scene over again from like Secret Service's perspective, and like, oh, it's a body double that got assassinated, and the president's really sick. And then you see the same scene again from yeah. like the mercenary. And it's like, I, I got to the third third time, and I'm just like, dude, like, I know, I know what you're trying to do, but like, you, you yeah. show me the same fucking they're, scene four times now. They're trying yeah. to do a memento. Yeah. But it's not actually working backwards towards a goal. It's like, it's like this, different this perspective. It's like yeah. four different windows, and one of them is fucking. <laughs> Yeah, it's Groundhog Day. It's all a lot of yeah. things. Yeah, <laughs> right. Just, I just yeah, left. That sucks if it's not a comedy. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I called my friend Ru- you know Russ. Um, I think I called Russ. Yeah. Like, it was like seven seven p.m. He was like he was still he was still going to Central, and I'm like I'm I'm gonna hang out with you. See, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 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 um, so yeah. yeah, I'm very excited about Kickboxer next week because if you don't know, there's a GIF out there, and I say GIF because it's graphics, not. Yeah. Giraffics, jelly, uh, yeah, yeah, a, a, a gif out there of uh Jean Claude Van Damme doing this, like, get yeah, down with it, that. like, fucking boogie thing yeah. where he's swinging his hips. Everybody's seen that, it's yeah. from this fucking movie next week. Okay, oh, yes, so expect us to have a very long, very uncomfortable <laughs> dialogue about that particular scene. Nice. I cannot wait for Kickboxer next week. Uh, Rob, why don't you send them to our website? And then, uh, Bob, if you have anything else you want to end the pod with, I will peace with thank you to the listeners. I love you all. Goodbye. Anything, Bob, before I uh, just plug it and play it? Robert Patrick was actually very proud of this role. <laughs> the, worst movie, the worst movie ever made. Dot com. See ya. Let's get Craig out of here. Bye, Craig.